Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages. Welcome back to another on track replay with your host, Great Tez. Now, let's get this battle on the road in three, two, one, roll out. Hello everyone, Great Taz here once again, and welcome back to Anon, their on-track replay. Uh, today we are going to be watching Jonah Boss 67 we're going to call him Jonah for short, play the STRV 103-0. This is the Tier 9 in the Swedish TD line. It also has, just like the previous one we just watched, the Udez has... Ooh, there, nice shot. Nice shot, baby. Uh -huh. I can see Jonas here has got a little bit of uh, regular APCR, some premium APCR, and also got Binox. Binox is not a bad thing, but you, a lot of times you see a lot more people use camouflage nets. Now, camouflage nets make these things almost invisible from everywhere. As you can see, he's taking a shot, backing up, not sure if he's getting spotted. He's playing it safe. That's not a bad thing to do. Uh, that does negate the effects of the... Um, Binox moving back and forth. Now turning left and right, I, I don't. I believe it. I don't believe it does. Uh, turning left and right, it, they, I think they have it mechanically set that it turns so low that it ignores turning that off, which is a really good thing because it also works exactly the same for the camo net. Ooh, that's going to be a nice shot right into the track. Not a tracking shot, but right into the side, right into the tracks. So, oh, there's that 50, 51. Oh, that one bounced. Surprisingly, on a 50-51, he bounced. No worries. Got that spotted up. Looking nice at 50-51. He's not sure if he wants to take a peek out. Does not know if he's still spotted. He isn't now, but he doesn't know that, does he? Well, you can never tell even with Aslan's 10-second uh, mod. It only stays on for 10 seconds. And if someone spots you again in that 10 seconds, it doesn't much matter because guess what? <coughs> You're still spotted. And the system's not going to tell you. Oh, there's an ERB90. He wants to take that out. He does have six cents, which is really good. And the FV4202 is in firing range. He's still, unfortunately, in TD mo siege mode. And that is going to get him. Ooh, the 4202 is spotted. He's going to give some love right back to that 4202. And it looks like that the TVP gave him back some love also right there. Now he's going to peek back up on the hill. The ERB-90 just seemed to must to get close enough to be able to spot him. Now, this is Ella Hoof, of course, and I haven't mentioned that yet. But Ella Hoof is a crazy, got some crazy setups and crazy stuff and positions. And uh, a lot of people do exactly what you see going on here. Ooh, that FV. Ooh, tracked him. That's going to be good, though. He's going to take that second shot right about and now. Good. Ooh. That was not good on the accuracy for the STRV 103-0. I've not seen such a bad. He takes a, a blind shot into the STR where the uh, FV 4202 was. Ooh, you backed up. Oh, ah, the accuracy. That's two shots on accuracy. That didn't work out just the way he wanted. That kind of stinks. Oh, there's that FV. There's that TVP. He's not looking at TVP. He's looking lower. Everybody else takes out the TVP. He's looking for those light tanks. He wants to take those light tanks out. Once those light tanks out, he is pretty much in the clear. Now, these light tanks, which are wheeled vehicles, have worse. Ooh, there's one gone. Oh, ooh. he's going to take the FV out. Oh, he's going for that FV. He's going for the FV. Shot. Oh, does not completely take it out. Only leaves it with 25, which really stinks. Oh, the FV didn't move back far enough. And if he doesn't, watch out. He's going to take another shot. Oh, just missed that shot just right over the top of the turret. Now, again, I mentioned this once before. Don't rely uh, when you're playing the game on your tracers to know exactly where your rounds are going. Due to the fact the way they program the tracers and program the rounds, the tracers do not follow the path of the rounds, which kind of sucks. Uh, I've watched tracers from my own tank go directly through Oh, I never noticed the fire in the background back there. That's pretty cool. Uh, anyway. Oh, it's an oil spill. Uh, very interesting. Uh, see, Wargaming's done a lot of things. I don't really pay attention to the backgrounds and the edgings. 
All right, he's moving back around the corner down here for the simple fact that he wants to get into a position uh, that he's not going to be hit from the side, and he's trying to start to defend the, the north line. Now, he's a little back further than he probably should be. He's taking a blind shot there. Uh, he's gonna move, looks like he's going to move up a little bit. Uh, trying to get into a position where he's got a good bush in front of him right there. Well, personal opinion, he should just drive forward, take out that. Yeah, he did exactly what I think he thought he should do. Now, he's got the bush, but unfortunately, he's not far enough behind the bush. Right now, it's not a big deal because everything's beyond his maximum spot range. So he's using the, t the maximum spot range, knowing of the maximum spot range, and keeping them between that and the maximum draw range. Once they get into the maximum spot range, his best bet is to actually pull back. Uh, takes a shot, misses. I'm not. Sure, I'm pretty sure that missed. I don't see any. Nope. Yep, that missed. Gonna take a shot into. Okay. Well, who do we shoot? All right. Take a shot into the STG. That is tier eight. That's a little weaker than. Oh, there's a scorpion. An HE round would be beautiful right now. Right into that scorpion. Gonna take out the STG. That is the smart move. Now the, the Scorpion is a one-shot for him. He's going to go ahead and take it out, too. Boom! And there goes another one. Now the uh, 4502 Bravo here, or B, is still quite a bit more... Oh, that one goes in. He's going to take a couple more shots. He's looking at the tanks coming around and how much HP they have. He's trying to figure out who's going to be the best one to hit next. All right, he's going to go for that. Now they are inside his spot range, and he is spotted. Uh, that was... Probably not sure who would have spotted him. Most of them heavies don't have a, a, a super maximum spot range. But here we go. Got to back on up and get into a better defensive position. All right. These tanks move pretty well fastward, backwards. And as you can see, he's looking backwards but keeping his gun to the front. These things take a time to get into siege mode. So you got to use the, the reverse speed to uh, maximize the effect. Now that's kind of funny, he's never been shot in the back, but it's kind of funny how the damage is showing on his tank from the shot that went through his upper portion of his frontal glacius there. It, it shows it coming out of the back side of his tank when you look at it from the front. Uh, it's kind of weird, uh, but right now you can't see it. All right, it's gotten to his spot. Ooh, gonna take out the 13 damage, but well, it takes the gun out and that's, that's what's important. All right. There's a 60 TP. Again, this is he is in a tier 9 and he's up against tier 10. So he's going to have a hard time dealing with the 60 TP. Just for the simple fact that, oh my god, that's a firing line. There's Udez, him, and two uh, SU-130 PMs. That's, I would not want to be that 60 TP peeking up and coming around that way. I really would not. Oh, there's Conway. He's Conway. He's oh, Conway got hit. Still not a one shot. Still don't have any clear shots due to the building. Oh, that Conway's moving in the wrong spot. Oh, yep. He paid for that one. All right. There's another one down. Looking around, watching the guard. The guard is doing the spotting for him right now. The 60 TP now understands the concept that uh, they're not in the greatest position. And he's pretty sure that there's a stinking fire line going on, as you can see. Jonas here is now moving, trying to get into a better spot. But the guard is now becoming under pressure, and the TDs have to pay attention to that. Oh, so do they have to pay attention. Look like Jonas is taking a moment to see what's going on. Switches into sniper mode, switches back out. Looking for that, that TVP, holding down that right mouse so he's not looking and zooming out. Looking around to see where everybody's going, just to see what's going on. That is a very good ploy to see how his team is purchased up. Udez gets the Centurion 7-1 in the side. 60 TP has disappeared. E4 is still missing. And the Waffen Tracker PZ4 is also still missing. There is also a Charioteer floating somewhere around on the battlefield. Don't know where it is. The Guard is their eyeballs right now and doing everything they can to actually get that. There's another shot from, it looks sounded like the 130. All right, there's the E4. Going to take a shot at that. All right, looks like the E4 knows that there's someone back there because it looks like they were spotted. Was going to take a shot until he got hit. Oh, there's the 60 TP. All right, this is a very powerful tank, very heavy armored, and a large gun. It's basically an E100 uh, in a better shape and form. All right, better turret, same gun. Takes another shot at the 60 TP. All right, that one, we're not sure. 
All right, unfortunately, the Waffen Dragon PZ4 takes out the guard. Now they are using their own eyes. And honestly, the person here probably with the best vision right now is going to be Jonas. All right. Spotted the uh, 60 TP. Now, the thing about the enemy team, they have uh, two tanks and two TDs. Uh, they have some really powerful TDs. All right, and it looks like the the two tanks at least have six cents because the moment they're spotted, they go ahead and disappear. Their 60 TP is trying to make a push for it. All right, J Jonas here is p perking back and forth. 60 TP he has made it into the cap. Now they're going to freaking make sure that they the 60 TP pays for that movement. All right, not spotted yet, not spotted yet. Got to get up there. Takes the shot, bounces, and is spotted. Unfortunately, this, I believe, only has 40 millimeters of armor. And guess what? That E4, the TP, and the Waffentrager PZ4 can all uh, overmatch the armor on this thing. So he's got to be careful. He's now pretty much unspotted, almost guaranteed. He looks over at the 103. Now he's respotted again. Shot come in from somewhere. I think it was the Centurion. All right. Still spotted. He pulls back up even though he's got to get a shot on that 60 TP. He's got to take that out. That right now is the enemy spotter. Aims at the weak point. Does not hit it. Now, this is another good thing about the uh, the this line. It's, it's su the gun is such high into the tank that it, you don't give very much vision when you're firing. So, there we go. That is down. The 60 TP is down. The Waffentrager PZ4 is trying to move around. As you can see here... Jonas is trying to keep in siege mode so that he doesn't have to switch back and forth. There, the charioteer is damaged and spotted. I didn't see him get spotted, but now he is, and that's a good thing. He's got uh, two, a 1.30 p.m. and a UDES to deal with. All right, there is the Centurion. Right. Still not sure where the... There's the E4. There's the Centurion. Got to peek up over the ridge. The Centurion realizes he spotted and pulls back really quick, like, and that was a very good move. Jonas was not in position. Jonas takes a shot at the commander's hatch on the E4, which really p irritates the hell out of me how the E4's commander's hatch is so weak compared to E3. And guess what? The E3 is just a welded-on turret of the E4 from the E4. All right. So, Centurion 7-1 has made it over there. Now, the uh, looks like they finally took... The other guys finally took care of... He is looking in sniper mode, but that look, ooh, there's that E4. That's a 105 millimeter gun. That's going to pen every time. He's trying to get rid of the Centurion 7-1. All right. He's still got two allies here, and they're coming around the side to do some damage. It looks like he is moving back and forth while holding that right mouse button. So his aim is in the direction he was moving initially. Moving back and forth. Oh, he's watching that Centurion 7-1, but he's also watching the E4. He wants that 7-1 to come on over that ridge. That 7-1 is going to pay for that real quick like that. The 7-1 fires back, doing more damage, unfortunately. And that return, he did not make out. They got a minute left in the two minutes left in the battle. That was a two-minute warning. Oh, the E, the 7-1 was distracted by the other two TDs off to the side, which had taken out the PZ-4. All right, he's got an invite from the Udez for a... Six cents going for that commander's hatch, and again, like I said, I think it's really dumb that they gave the E3 such a powerful commander's hatch and took it away from the E4. And in the turn, if you look at it overall in the end of everything, what it really boils down to is they're the same tank, there is no really major difference. The only major difference is, is the E3 has a welded on turret, as where the E4 has a mobile turret, and Everything about the armor, and I've read about the two uh, tanks as they were designed, they are exactly the same. All right, is he going to accept that invite at the last minute? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. That's a brothers in arms right there, ladies and gentlemen. Brothers in arms. <clears throat> but as you can see, that was a good victory and a very good battle. And we're going to go rush on over to what? Replays.eu to see how they did today all right as you can see here jonas got an ace tanker ace tanker came from a total of 
1,287. It looks like the Udez also has got an ace tanker right there for that 1,357, because remember, we just watched the Udez, and an 1,175 was more than enough to get it. So, looks like the Udez has also got an ace tanker going on there for them, and that's good for them, also with brothers in arms right there. Jonas also got Bruiser, Fire for Effect, got two Bonds, and that came from High Caliber, Top Gun, of course, like we said, we got Brothers in Arms, and High Caliber came from his 6,466. The Udez got roughly 200, more than half that. All right, the enemy team is the Waffentrager PZ4, was the top damage dealer. Looks like Tier 9s and Tier 8s ruled the world this day. The tier closest tier 10 was actually uh, is the same position on both sides when it comes to damage, and that would be fourth place. So the ally E4 did terrible uh, with zero damage. So yeah, that kind of happens. Anyways, as you can see here, quite a bit of shots off. Got six kills, which gets him exactly top gun. There's a six. Uh, is 6,466 damage. Now, he did fire at... What did he fire at? He fired at the... Uh, oh, where is it? The, the, he got two shots, and we did see two shots of damage go into the FV. So, the, the blind shot he fired that at the FV did not hit. All right. 34 shots total. 26 hit. 19 of them did penetrate. There's a six point... Almost six... 5,000. The majority of his damage was from over 300 meters, and that's what these these things are not brawlers. They're uh, they're nothing like the Fosh line. The the Fosh can actually go up and get in your face and brawl, but not let these cannot. These have to be back. These have to snipe. Uh, these are really a true sniper TD. Um, you can try to brawl with them, but because of the simple fact they have no gun elevation or depression. Without them going into the siege mode, you really come down to a bad point. Four hits received, three of them bid pen, one did not pen, which that's always good. And he blocked 230 damage from that. He spotted one enemy, not quite sure who he spotted. Ah, that was the Pajetto, he spotted the Pajetto, so that's pretty cool. 11 vehicles damaged, six of those 11 he destroyed. Base captured none, never left his own base of course, and had six defense points defending his own base. 13, 14 minute battle. Received 46.6 thousand credits, but spent 46.7 just in ammo. So I ended up with a loss. 1,287 is base experience times 2. So you got 2,547 overall experience. Going to push him right towards that. Hope everyone enjoyed this video and replay. And if you did enjoy the replay, go ahead down in the description right below. And then it's going to take you right to this page. And to show Jonas Boss 67 that he thought this was a good battle, just go ahead and click that heart just like that. Now, if you think this was a good video, and go ahead and click that like and let everyone know that you did. If you do not, then go ahead and you know what to do. Now, if you're not a subscriber and you want to keep up to date with all my World of Tanks stuff, game reviews, and other things I do here on this channel, don't forget to click that subscription button. And if you want instant notification, make sure to click the notification bell, changing it from occasional to always. Also, I have a Discord. You can come over, uh, drop off replays if you want to see them recorded, or just chat about World of Tanks. I have Apex Legends and other game chat channels in there. Uh, growing community. Come on and join us down. Link in description. Uh, so I stream from Twitch to Twitch. Real life gets in the way of doing that on a good set schedule. But I try to stream from time to time, so the link for that is also in the description. Patreon funded, and many more links down in the description. So go ahead and scroll down there and read what I have, and check some of those links out. But without all being said, I'm going to get on out of here and say see you on the battlefield.